After all, those were his orders. There was no way to discover the truth. The Newfoundland's wireless had been removed by her owners before she sailed. They felt that its presence did not add to the profits of the seal fishery. When we start walking towards our ship, Mr. Tuff, George Tuff, the second answer, keep the wind in the side of your face and we can make it before dark. And we start the walk and the wind was changing and we didn't know it. And you know what that mm -hmm. meant. We went around in circles yes. almost. One fuller just before just fell in the water and you know, and that was the end of him. About one o'clock that evening, a gale came on to blow, which afterward was followed by a blinding drift and snow. Methinks I can imagine somehow they sat down and wept, while others fought until the end with that grim reaper death. And it was a bad night. It was rain mixed with snow. And we got wet through the back and shoulders, you know. It was very uncomfortable. In the middle of the night, about maybe two o'clock or around there, the yes. wind chopped and then it started to freeze. And then our clothes got frozen, and, you know. But they got a little bit warmer because we were, it, it was windproof. You could feel that uh, coldness of the dampness in your back. We used to pong one another on the, on the back, march around single file, you know. Some fellers would say, well, maybe we get picked up tomorrow. Some fellers say, we'll never get picked up. The snow was really coming down, oh yes. When the frost got in the snow, it started to drift. And uh, that night, oh, it was what we call in Newfoundland, mad rough. And all that night, the wind howled from the north. It must have been a ghastly sight to see him going past. The monster death upon the ice to form his gruesome task. And as the night wore slowly on, the wind with fury blew. His icy hand was laid on some who formed that gallant crew. The men start to die there. They start dying, and they were dying all day Wednesday and all Wednesday night. You see them dropping air and dropping there. They die on their feet. They talk about their wives and their families and their children, mothers and fathers. They talked about practically everything. So I worked a little bit harder. I stamped and I slapped my hands and I did everything to try to uh, survive so as nobody else would get my girl. I wore out my boots almost to the inner soles to get back home to my girl, the one I loved. Nice. I saw a lot of things, a lot of queer things. I saw big kittles of tea and everything else out there. I saw my mother's old kitchen home. Saw all the family, saw my mother with the white apron on in the old kitchen. And, uh, but I didn't stay that way very long. I knew that there was something wrong, you know. So I snapped out of that. I was really hungry and thirsty. No drink, nothing to eat. Sleep, oh, if I could only lay down and go to sleep. The last night we were out on the ice, I talked to George a lot. Skipper George, what do you think it is? Weather, what do you think of it all now? Tell me. And he said to me, he said, Molin, he said, I don't think, he said, there will be a man left to tell the tale. Well, George, I'm not going to die. A strong man bowed beneath his grasp, a youthful head bent low. To him who rolls the storm along and cheers the weary soul. When dawning broke on Thursday morn, the storm it did abate, and nearly eighty sons of toil upon the flow lay dead. And you know, there were several fellas died in the morning that day we were rescued, and it was a beautiful morning. 
And I, I, I talk to them. I say, Does, wherever you look, there's a ship, and we'll surely be rescued. And they say, I can't take it any longer. 52 hours, that's what I was out, 52 hours. Uh, and uh, two nights, and well, just about three days. Anyway, this, uh, uh, the first uh, men that came up and made Bella Ventures men, they, that was the rescue men now, coming to take us up after, after they had spotted us from the crow's nest. I met two fellers, and they had their pockets full of bread, hard bread, you know. I had no appetite for that, and I couldn't, I never had strength enough to chew it, in fact. <laughs> i tell you what happened, that Bill Vinci, yes, he, he picked up, first he picked up all the survivors, and then he uh, picked up the dead, dead bodies. Captain Abram Kane picked up so many and transferred them to the Bill Vinci. Captain Abram Kane was icing seals now on one side and dead men on the other. Oh, Newfoundland, oh, Newfoundland, who mourn your noble dead, who often trod the frozen pans and from it wrung their bread. Now in this hour of deep, deep gloom, combine and do your best to ease the ones now left to mourn the wives and fatherless. <laughs> We arrived in St. John's in the Bella Venture, and I never saw so many people in all my life. The Navy men picked up the survivors that was uh, living, you know, how they carried them, and then some of them had to be put on stretchers. They were so sick. I don't think really that a disaster should have really happened. If Captain Kane had said to George, you go and pan seals and I'll pick you up before dark, he would have been doing something wonderful there, and he really could have done all that. Had he done that, nobody would have perished. So if they call it an act of God, I don't know. I don't think so. No more their footsteps shall be heard, those true and faithful dead. No more we'll gaze upon their face as oft times for we did. Their names will live in history and hang on memory's wall as true born British heroes who died at duty's call. 